So we've spoken about triangular arbitrage quite a lot in the last couple of weeks. What I want to do in this video is just get very real about how we make money with triangular arbitrage in the real world. So by now, you will have a very, very good understanding of what is triangular arbitrage, how does it really work, and how do I trade it based on the price and the depth, etc. So by now, you're going to have all of that understanding. If you haven't seen the last few videos on that and you're not totally a fay with triangular arbitrage, Go back and watch those. Don't even watch this video. But if you've seen those videos, this is going to be a very useful video to you. We're just going to do a lot of talking, but it's important. This is stuff that you don't want to miss. You really want to be thinking about. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about how to make money in the real world with triangular arbitrage. There's a number of thought processes that I wanna take you through right now. So the first thing is pretty obvious. You wanna think about the price and we've already done that. We have a high level calculation that will tell us whether there is a forward or a reverse arbitrage percentage calculation that we can take advantage of. The second thing we wanna do is look at the depth. So that price, is it superficial? Is there not enough size? And we want to look at the depth. Let's actually look at the size on those order books and find out what is the true percentage. And when we looked at this in the last example, even though there was a percentage arbitrage opportunity, we could see in reality because of the size, there really wasn't. So first price, then depth. Then the third thing we need to talk about is volatility. So now I want to, I want to stay on this point. And actually this point was inspired by one of the wizards that I know will be watching this video as well. So you know who you are. And I would totally align with our fellow wizard here when we're talking about what coin do you actually hold? You think about it, crypto is really volatile. Let's say you're making 3% a day. Let's say you're doing full on arbitrage, you're making 3% upwards a day in terms of arbitrage, but the crypto market is moving against you at 5% a day. Well, all you're doing is just recovering some of that loss. So when I'm talking about the crypto market, I'm talking about the prices versus the dollar. So in reality, should you be holding, and this is a question you need to answer really, is do you wanna be holding US dollars on that exchange? And when I'm talking about US dollars, I'm talking about really the stable coin, US dollar tether. Do you wanna be holding stable coin on that exchange that you then exchange for euro or bitcoin or ethereum or whatever holds the arbitrage opportunity now you need to think about something when you're doing this which is you're adding another layer of spread you're adding another layer of trading when you're doing that but if you're going to be placing a lot of trades and making quite a bit on that exchange in that day then it should be okay because at the beginning of the day you can exchange from that coin into bitcoin or ethereum or whatever coin you want to be trading your arbitrage in and at the end of the day you can exchange it back to USDT. I wouldn't recommend exchanging it back on every single trade because you're just eating into so much percentage and you're gonna to need to look for far bigger percentage opportunities on the order books for triangular arbitrage. So this is a reality you really need to think about. So the next thing is speed. We can see that by going through these examples, even though I could do it pretty quickly when I'm used to it, it wouldn't take me more than a minute to actually pull a calculation together, but it takes time. And we really need to think about speed here because the reality is you have competitors. With arbitrage, by the very nature of arbitrage, the more people that do it, the less effective it becomes. The market relies on arbitrage to balance out and make sure that everything stays in order. And the reality is with you as an arbiter, what you wanna to do to have an edge over your competitors is really have speed. So what am I talking about here? I'm really talking about automation. And finally, it's execution. So when you actually go to place a trade, you need to make sure you're trading the right coin. There's no human error. You don't have room for mistakes. A mistake can cost you 5% because it's more likely that you're gonna lose more money by making a mistake than you're going to gain money by accident. So the execution of actually trading it is also very important. Now, I don't wanna sit here and give you a whole bunch of problems. I wanna give you solutions, the whole point about what I'm building and developing at the moment is a tool to actually make all of this very, very, very straightforward. So I'm actively working to solve these problems right now. And it's very exciting for me because I'm loving the project. I'm seeing a lot of opportunities. In fact, I can see the arbitrage opportunities right now. I'm not interested in trading them. I'm interested in building the tool for traders to trade them. So it's really, really interesting. I'm really enjoying that project. So I don't want you to think I'm just coming at you with a ton of problems here. 
I'm coming at you with the reality of triangular arbitrage. You know, if you want to make money with triangular arbitrage, my advice is the same to any new retail trader, which is number one, look for low liquidity, high volatility. I know counterintuitive to everything you've been taught, but this is where I believe the money is at because you're looking for white space. You're looking for areas with less competition. What am I saying? I'm saying that you want to find exchanges that most people aren't playing in because those are the exchanges that either that exchange is like crap anyway, you can take some money from it and get out or people just aren't playing on that exchange. They're looking at Binance. They're looking at Bitfinex. They're looking at Coinbase, whatever. They're trading arbitrage on exchanges with a ton of volume, etc., because it's easier for the execution, etc. The APIs are better, so the speed is better. But what about all these unturned stones on other exchanges? Now, for those of you who've been watching all these videos and following, I really appreciate you reaching out to me. I've really appreciated the conversations I've been having with people from this channel, actually connecting with people because we are people. We're not numbers. We're not a digit or a statistic of subscribers. I'm not interested in how many subscribers do I have? I'm interested in you. I'm interested in the relationship. And so one of the things I really want to do is organize a conference call. So if you've been watching this far, this might be something you're interested in. I want to organize a video conference call for wizards where we can actually get on. I've got a Zoom link we can use where we can get on a conference call and actually meet each other on video. Like if you have a webcam or you have a phone or whatever, we can use that to actually have a video call to talk about the projects you're working on. Where are you in your journey? I'm interested in you. And if you have questions for me, you will actually get to ask those. I mean, we could do an AMA or something on YouTube, but you can see I'm not actually marketing this channel. And my focus right now isn't building to tens of thousands of subscribers. I'm interested in building relationships with real people out there that I can help build tools to solve problems for. That's why I'm here. So if that interests you, drop something in the comments. My email is admin at cryptowizards.net. You can email me there. I'm not great with email. It takes me a couple days, but I will definitely get back to your email. And what I can do is email the whole group. So everyone that emails me about this conference, what I will do is actually set up a call. Now, even if it's just one of you who's interested in that, I want to have that call with you. So let me know what you think about that. Until the next one, take care as always and talk soon.